It's supposed to show up here. Yeah, but um, let's see. Such a big deal. Um, oh, there, there we go. Oh, or maybe it just needed to be turned on. I think we've had that problem before. Good. You have to know somebody that knows the code. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's true. Oh, maybe. Uh, of which I am not one. I think they're on the right either. table. It's me. Get back. Thanks to the um, Dan, what were you thinking about as far as how many teams? Because we've got two of those bags. Now we can make four. Or I don't know if I can get bags, but we can make baskets or something else. Um, no, I guess I'm one, two. And then now we're in, in this aisle, I don't that's going to be two different places, but. That's, she's, she should be. Back, I yeah. 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 But that will still be. Um, okay. Sharon are you, and. Were you thinking one, two, the team would do two at a time? I Not think, two. I think if they're close in proximity, what do you think, Nikki? I think. How, yeah. how long would, she, would you spend with right. one person? Um, 30 to 45 minutes. I want to say two minutes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So we so hold more values. Well, three days of vacation by Bible school is pretty much more than his butt out. <laughs> I was surprised that he, he said he would do it this year because he's just not that stuff. But, yeah. you know, it's. Uh, yeah, but he loved vacation Bible school, so well that's good. But it is that that's that's great. Yeah. So I'm glad he was able to do it. For three days in He was supposed to be here tonight. He's like, yeah, but just can't do it. Well, evidently he can get on Zoom maybe wants to. Well, I did he didn't I didn't even think about him oh. being available on Zoom. But I think he was gonna record it too. Oh good. Did he already hear the call? Hey! Oh, we in here? Yeah. We in here? Yes. yes. Oh, the wind's from Paris. Oh, it's in the car. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's no eating while we're meeting. <laughs> Let you share. There, yeah. There's no eating while we are meeting. No, we eat. Has the meeting begun? Yes. <laughs> no. It's only five fifty-five. <laughs> well, you're on, you're not on late dial time, are you? He must be because he's slow. Yeah, he's slow. <laughs> not no more. I'm not on late dial time anymore. Thankfully. Well, that's good. Body.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> How's up the mountain? Beautiful, rainy, cool, sleeping under a blanket. Perfect. Oh, oh nice. I love it. Perfect. Yep. I don't know, Dad, that envious. I didn't sleep under one last night. My wife had air conditioning down, turned to the old. Do you happen to know what they're supposed to wear to vacate some bottles with tomorrow? Oh, I volunteers. Do you know? I don't, I, I don't know, but I know somebody who might know. <laughs> well, I mean, you want me to call her? Well, I, did she take one of the calls? No, she did not. Oh, she would probably take a call from somebody in here quicker than me. I see. Who? Who's Sophie. Oh. Do you know what they're supposed to wear for vacation Bible school tomorrow? Uh-oh. Uh, what? No. Tell me what they're supposed to wear. It was green today. Yeah. Oh, they're different colors. Where's the sky? Or isn't it the space? But Peyton was telling me. Does she know that you know what she's supposed to wear tomorrow? I well, I think it's spaced out. Like it's either spaced out hair or it's something to do with space. I'll ask you. What you see you when you if you gotta space out your hair. No, I'm not oh, oh, oh. so like that. Peyton, hey, that's for my taking my school. I'm not gonna be there. Okay. Peyton will be there. She has to run the craft tomorrow. She sells crafts. Today she gets. Can y'all hear me? Um. Yes. On the yes, screen. Sir. Okay. Yes. Can y'all hear everybody else or only me? Everybody. We can't, we, we can't see anybody else, but we can hear them. Oh yeah. All right. Got a handout here, and uh, like I said on my email, I'll email this to, to everybody later, um, but this is what we're going to walk through. Um, to one more. I'm not sure if I expect anybody else to be here tonight, but um, this is a good group. Let's well, see. thank you for doing it on Zoom. Yes, we appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, this will work out great because I'm also recording it. So even people who aren't on Zoom will be able to see it. Uh, so let's open with a prayer and we'll get started. Let us pray. Holy God, you call us to care for everyone in need of care. And so tonight we are here to care for our members who are not able to come be part of the church, who are not able to come to communion, but are still part of your body and are still in need of your grace and the sign seal that is communion. So we thank you for those who have answered the call to be about this ministry. And we pray that you would, uh, that your spirit would lead us in all the ways that we reach out to them and, and share this amazing grace with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey. Is that air conditioning running or can it be air conditioning running? It's hot. Yeah, it is kind of warm in here. There's something about fans. There must be a fan in there. There's, there's. Oh, that's what the, I figured those fans are for a purpose. Eddie. Yoga. Yoga. Unplug fans when you leave. Yoga. Jeez. I, don't, oh. I don't know. Well, you don't know where the thermostat for this room is, do you? I think that's for the other side of the hall, though. There's one in the next Sunday school. Oh, it's fun. While he's doing that. I get it. I understand. You want to sit in the fan? I don't like you. Are you sitting there? Yeah. All right. While we're trying to get more comfortable, it is kind of stuffy in here. Uh, thank you all. This is uh, really something we need to do. And um, I want to say as we get started, expect this to be a really meaningful ministry for you. I've never taken communion into somebody's home or hospital room that it wasn't meaningful 
uh, not only to them deeply meaningful, but also to me as well. Uh, so this is a, a wonderful ministry to be involved in. Anybody ever done this before back when we've done it? Okay. Most everybody. All right, great. So this won't be too new. Um, for some of us, it's just a refresher course. Okay, I, I do think maybe I hear it running now. Um, <clears throat> so we've got uh, this document in front of us. It's called Extending the Table. And um, it's important that we remember that what we're doing here is uh, is really extending what we've already done in church so that we're not... Um, separating out part of the body of Christ, but we're drawing people into the body of Christ. And so that's why we're calling this Extending the Table uh, Homebound Communion. So this is just, it's front and back, and it's 10 steps that I, I think will get you there. And if you have some questions, please ask. But um, let me just start by saying I'll have this, and we'll have um, these documents as well to use but also rely on your own um, wisdom. Rely on your own sense of uh, what needs to happen in that moment. Sometimes you walk into a place and you go, and, and you realize the person you're serving communion is um, maybe hindered in such a way that it wouldn't make sense to fully go through a whole the whole thing with call and response or whatever. You know, they may not be able to respond, um, and you can kind of feel your way through what's appropriate in each situation. I'm going to say there's there's no wrong way to do this except to not do it. Um, that's probably not a good Presbyterian answer. There probably is a wrong way to do it. But, you know, if you go into somebody's house and give them communion, you've done the right thing. So baseline is that's what we're shooting for. But uh, here are some, some helpful tips. So first, right off the bat, um, I would say find some point in in the service that Sunday to pray and just just say a prayer, um, maybe during the offertory for the people you're about to visit, um, for yourself, for the ministry that you're about to engage in. Um, uh, something about me, I, I often like to pray before I walk into somebody's house or room um, just because, you know, I, I want the Holy Spirit to be working through me, not not just me trying to, uh, you know, stumble through. So uh, pray during church. So then after worship, we're going to have the baskets or bags up by the table. Um, so they'll be, you know, part of the same blessing and everything that we do for all of the communion, um, but they'll be filled with communion to take home. So grab your bag or basket. Um, check it to be sure everything's in there. There'll be a checklist in there of things that should be in there. I'm going to update these a little bit from what they have been, um, but they're pretty much the same as the way they were. Um, so check, be sure things are there. Um, and then take a minute just to decide who's going to do the parts um, between you and your teammate um, before you go in into the room. Number three, uh, call on the way. Sometimes people need to be back out last minute. That you know, when you're when you're visiting somebody who's homebound, some things can change quickly. You know, and they may say, you know, it's just that today's not the right time. Um, but also, sometimes they just need to give you instructions. Uh, come to the back door, or you know, watch out for the dog. <laughs> you know, here's the gate code. I don't know, but uh, call on the way. Just let them know you're coming. Um, I'm going to stop there. Any questions about those first three or thoughts? Okay. Um, number four, when you arrive, greet them and tell them your name. So they may not know who you are, or you may be visiting someone you know well, but, um, you know, say hello, greet them. Um, and then number five, just visit. So um, don't go straight into communion, but Sit down, spend some time talking, um, you know, let them know about you, learn about them. This part, again, you know, there may may not be much of a visit to be had, depending on what, what shape anybody's in, but you may 
find somebody is feeling very talkative and um, would like to visit. Um, so do that. While you're doing that, um, and I, I say on here, some people might not have the energy for a very long visit. So you don't feel like you have to drag it out. But, um, you know, just just start to build a rapport between you. Um, and as you visit, kind of make a mental note of if, if there's some needs that they have and, and ask, um, you know, do you need um, a Stephen minister? Uh, you know, if, if it seems like that's something that, that might be helpful or, um, you know, do you need a call from the pastor? Even if you don't ask that, you come tell me, you know, I went and saw them. They, I think they really need a call. Um, I'm happy to do that. Um, but just uh, other things as, as you, as it comes up that you think that are appropriate for the church to get involved in, um, just kind of make a mental, mental note of that as you visit. Also, just make a note of things that you can be in prayer for them about as well. All right. Um, so number six, when the time feels right, um, there's no set thing, but just when it feels like we visited a little bit, it feels like it's the right time, move into starting the service. You might say, hey, are we are we ready to have communion? Um, and so now the fun begins. Um, Number seven, everyone in the room or house should be encouraged and invited, but not pestered <laughs> into participating. But, um, and this includes, you know, uh, serve staff that may be there to, to help out. Um, yeah, you know, any, anybody who is around is invited to, to the table as long as we're sharing communion there. Number eight, find a table. This is the fun part. So sometimes you have to find a table. Um, you may be sitting in a living room where there's a coffee table and it's just kind of perfect and that that's fine. Some You may be in a more of a hospital room where you have to like pull a food tray around and use that. As we learned in COVID, anything can be the Lord's table um, if that's what you're using it for. So I... In, intentionally didn't bring a table into this room because this is sort of what you have to do. You have to look around. I've used a chair before. Um, I'm going to pull this thing over. Because <laughs> it's flat and square. So this is a table. Um, and so before you get started, you you set the table and, and the key to that is it becomes the Lord's table um, because because you'll make it the Lord's table. And you can do things to help with that. You can put like a small cross or a Bible on it, um, you know, things, appropriate symbols. You might have a small like tablecloth or some kind of um, uh, a, a stole or something to put down. Um, but the main thing that makes it a communion table are the communion elements. So um, I find that when you're doing communion uh, at home, hospital room or whatever, once you sort of find a clear table and, and like if you've got a food tray or something and it's got some old orange juice on it, like clear those things, put them somewhere else. <laughs> you know, uh, if it doesn't seem appropriate to be the Lord's table, put them somewhere else. So it, it does become more of an appropriate table. Um, but then what, what really makes it the table is, is the elements. So you're moving towards starting communion. Um, you may still be having a conversation, but somebody should be setting out the elements. Now, these are, um, these are in the bag. They're these little pastoral communion sets. Um, we're not going to use this side. This is for bread, and you you would put the like little wafer, little round things in there. Um, we're not going to use that because what what you're going to have is the bread that we had in worship that day. It'll be in a bag. Um, so instead, we'll put the cups out. These are glass cups that came with this set. Um, 
but you'll also have like a baggie of plastic cups and you can you can use either one uh, the glass ones will need to be washed when you're finished and and the plastic ones will need to be thrown away uh, this little vial I'm going to give you a, a plate to do this on um, because sometimes it splashes. We're not really taking communion. That's why there's not as <laughs> one for everybody. Um, but you fill those and then these are just torn pieces of bread, but you'll have... Um, you know, the, those cut pieces of bread we use for church. Um, and and I would say also, I should have said this, before you start handling that stuff, you'll have some hand sanitizer to do. You may have just come from church shaking a lot of hands. Um, you know, this is a, a grace for those you're visiting who probably need to worry about germs a little bit uh, more than some. So you set a table with communion. And then um, go through the service. Now these are, uh, these were already in here. Let me see if I have, can y'all kind of look on one together? And y'all, let me hold on to one of these. <laughs> Those on, online, um, the next time you're here, um, I can I can show you this. Well, I can also, I can send it to you on, online as well. I can send this. So this comes out of the Book of Common Worship. It's the service, homebound communion, but it's specifically the, um, the extending the Lord's table service. And so I'm going to walk through this. Um, it says in the beginning, um, you know, you introduce yourself. You've already done that, so don't worry about that. Um, opening sentences, um, that's a good one. You can come up with your own. If you want to just read a, a line out of Scripture, you can. Uh, then the, there are these words about extending the Lord's table. And this is just a way of letting people know um, that this communion is part of the church's larger communion that this isn't some separate thing. Uh, then there's a prayer of confession. And um, you can say that together. A lot of times for that part, I've just prayed it myself because sometimes, uh, you know, just like I said, sometimes the person doesn't seem like they're up for saying liturgy along with you. And that's, that's fine. Um, you may just say that yourself as a prayer. But then you've got the um, declaration of forgiveness also, the assurance of pardon. The next thing after that is scripture reading. Before I do that, I'm, I'm also going to throw uh, one of these books in the bag or a basket. Um, or, you know, if you think of a song that you just feel like we can all sing from memory, um, you don't have to do a song, but if it seems appropriate, uh, or seems like something that person would like. Uh, you might ask them if they have a favorite song they'd like to sing, um, or one verse of a song or something. That can feel awkward um, to some people. Other people, <laughs> other people can <laughs> can get right into it. Um, but say, well, I'd love to hear you sing that song. <laughs> Well, you know, the reason I, I say that, and, and again, like the more you do this, the more you kind of figure out what you want to do. But um, the main reason I point that out, well, one is that some people just worship more in song than they do in words. Um, so that's one. The other is uh, if you're serving somebody who maybe has some dementia, something like that, sometimes a, a song can access their memory better than any any of the words can. So, um, you know, that's just something to, to keep in mind that you may, you know, you may have somebody who's not responsive at all, but if you start singing Amazing Grace, 
miracle of miracles, they're singing it with you. <laughs> um, so that's something to keep in mind. It's not it's not even listed in here to do a song, but you can. Um, so scripture, and you can do it wherever you want. Uh, I'm not going to tell you when to sing. Do it, do it at the beginning, middle, whatever. Um, scripture, read the scripture. I, I have in there the second scripture reading from, from that Sunday morning, because that's what I usually preach from. So, so read that scripture, and then um, there's supposed to be an interpretation of the word, the sermon. Um, that's a real loose word. Sometimes um, I've done this where I just, I read the scripture and just said, what do we think about that? <laughs> you know, and let let each person kind of say something about it. And that that becomes our interpretation of the word. Um, but you can also, if you don't want to do that, uh, if you can kind of give a summary of the sermon from that morning or, or something you remember from the sermon when you were awake um, during it. Uh, that works too. Um, again, there's no there's no wrong answer here, but uh, some kind of interpretation, whether it's everybody chiming in or um, one person kind of re remembering what was said earlier in church. Then this uh, this prayer of thanksgiving and intercession, and uh, that ends with the Lord's prayer. Again, that's that's one of those. Can, can be kind of a magical thing because people who aren't engaging otherwise start to hear the, the rhythm and poetry of it and, and can come in. Uh, then you serve communion. And it's, it's written here, but you can say uh, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Or you can say bread of heaven, cup of salvation. Um. What I would say is important here is everybody take communion. So um, you also, even though you already had it Sunday, if it's your second visit, you know, if you went to somebody, you went to somebody else, take it again. Because <laughs> uh, it's not communion if, if you know somebody's taking it by themselves. Um, so everybody take communion. Um, and then close with a blessing. And here's a benediction in here. Um, so I wanted to say, I have this list on my, on my handout here. Um, you can use this word for word if you want. Um, but if you find it a little clunky and you feel like you could do something better on your own, um, the important parts are let them know that this is an extension of communion that we already shared. So, you know, there's that long thing in the beginning, but you can also just say, um, we want you to know that this is part of the communion we already had um, because you're still part of our church. You're still part of our the body of Christ with us. Um, so, you know, this is, this is us bringing you in to worship, not bringing worship out or something like that. You know, if you feel like you can get that across in your own words, Great. Do that. Um, opening words, some kind of call to worship. You can use what's in the bulletin that day. If you want to take the bulletin and use that call to worship, use a few lines from it. You can do that. Um, confession and assurance of pardon. Again, uh, you can read what's in here. You can also just pray your own prayer of confession. Lord, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and we need your grace. Uh, please, please forgive us and renew us. And then and then an assurance of pardon. Um, you can use what's in here is fine. If you if you know one by heart, you can use that. Uh, scripture reading and sermon, that's sort of a, a deal breaker for Presbyterians. Whenever you have communion, you have to have scripture reading and sermon. Um, but like I said, it's, you know, read, read what we read in church that morning. And, um, and the sermon is just y'all talking about it. And, and it doesn't have to be long. You know, it's, it can be, again, that's something you kind of fill out. Um, you may say, well, this is what I think about that. And nobody else might jump in and you go, all right. So <laughs> uh, a prayer of Thanksgiving, there's a, there's a prayer in here you can use, but you can say your own prayer. Um, thanking God for, 
creation and for Jesus and for the church um, and for communion. And um, taking communion, of course, that's part of it. And then the benediction. Uh, after that, you, what I find usually is that this service or you know, some kind of taking communion together usually just feels like a, a period end on the visit. Um, so, uh, you know, you've done a benediction, everybody kind of looks at each other and usually they say, well, thank you for coming. And, and that's a good time to say, you know, glad, glad to come um, and, and make your exit. Uh, clean up, <laughs> don't, don't leave crumbs uh, on your makeshift table if, if you can. And um, so all of this, you know, 30 to 45 minutes is, is a pretty, pretty good expectation. Um, that's not hard and fast. It might be shorter than that. You know, um, if, uh, if, you, if you're with somebody that's not real responsive, you, you know, there's not much of a visit to be had. Um, you know, maybe shorter than that, and that's fine too. Keep in mind all, all kinds of things that may be difficult. You know, somebody may have difficult difficulty swallowing or chewing. Uh, you may want to keep some get some water close by. If that seems to be like a concern. Um, that's it for my list of things. So, what what questions do we have? All right, Jack. Um, let me just get a full scope of your vision of this. Are we are we talking primarily about people that are are bedridden? Are we talking about people that are homebound? Are we talking about people that might have watched the service on on YouTube and now they would like to have communion? Um, you know, is is there is there any kind of limit restriction or range in which we offer this communion? Um, but this is, we're basing this off of um, a homebound list that our Congregational Care Committee came up with. And um, so that's sort of who we're trying to, to reach with this. Um, they may have watched the service on TV earlier that morning. Um, that's, certainly, that, that's certainly possible. As far as what kind of condition they may be in, um, it's definitely people who have a hard time leaving home to come to church. Um, they may not be completely restricted, but they may be restricted enough that they can't really come to church in the morning. Um, but that can range from uh, somebody who's just kind of home most of the time to somebody who is bedridden. Um, uh, there's no there's, there's no certainty there. And that list is very clearly. Yeah, and the list the list is be, being updated. Hopefully, as we get. So, are you going to be are you going to be trying to develop a list and get the communion accomplished on the first on the Sundays that you do communion with the congregation? Like, or will you have a schedule and on that meeting Sunday, you'll already have a list that everybody's going to be going out and doing that with the list you have that Sunday? Yeah, we'll have a list and, 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 and assignments. Yeah. So, um, depending on who's available that particular Sunday. But I think we had said we were going to try to do it four times a year, once, once a quarter. So this is not a this is not a every first Sunday of the month. We're not going to do this every time we have communion. Uh, at least not at first. Right, let let me just clarify what I'm asking. It's like there's people like Dave Regner who sometimes can come and sometimes can't. Uh, do we offer them an opportunity to have communion at home, or is somebody got to be on the you know, the injured reserve list. Has somebody got to be on the, the, we're praying for them because they're being treated. Can well, somebody but, call and say, I'd like to have communion. I can't come to church, but can I have communion? Yes. Is that an option? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They can do that. Um, 
for our purposes of setting this up, we, we need to have a list to, to know who we're kind of aiming at to, to get communion to. But, um, you know, if, if, if anybody knows of someone who, who may need it, um, that they can be added to that list or at least, or at least asked if they want it. Um, so that's just a matter of, um, like if you think yeah, Dave may need it, um, He's on the list. He's on the list. I just okay. put him on the list because I know that Kent comes on Sundays and I felt like he would be very receptive if he couldn't be here. Too. Yeah. Uh, so he is on the list, but, you know, it, it, if it anybody... It depends weekly, but I think yeah. if somebody requests so is there like a calling that goes out before the list is drawn up for a particular Sunday morning based on who wants it and who's available and who's on the list? Well, that was one of the first things we do is we call before we go, right? But, but, but during the week, you, know, you don't call that during the week, aren't you, Ann? I, I, yeah. I would before yeah, 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 yeah. Before it's actually... Yeah. Because not everybody, not everybody on the list may want it or may be around. Uh, so yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The list that's compiled uh, by Ann or by Congregational Care Committee, um, you know, they'll be checked on the week before to make sure to see if they want it uh, or if they're around. The other thing that I might suggest is that you take a copy of the bulletin and leave it with whoever it is that you're being with so that they get announcements and they get a feel of, of you know, what the service was. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an issue last time. Thank you. Would the brand be gluten free? Uh, you know, that's something we'll have to figure out in contacting people before. Yeah, that's um, the one. Do they need gluten for, I guess, we, we need for it. Yeah. Right. That's something we'll need to. Davis. Uh, Davis. Yes. It, 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 to me, it's real important that we contact because um, pretty far enough ahead to be reasonable because we also need to know how many people may be there. No, knowing that we're coming, they mm -hmm. may want to have their entire family there. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in that situation where they called everybody to come <laughs> that afternoon because we were serving communion. So we need to know that because it may be more than we've got than we've got stuff. For. Sure. So we, to me, you know, we, we need to know, and we need to put, I, I feel like when we call, we need to ask, um, you know, are there any family members that might like to be there with you? Okay. Because sometimes that's, that's important, especially when someone's very ill. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, it well, might even go ahead, Jack. It might even be better to bring a goblet in case you're doing intention because you could do a whole crowd <laughs> on the same amount, of, <laughs> yeah, really. same amount of juice you put in four glasses. You can always ask for a goblet. Yeah, well, Wine. we can always, Wine. we can, uh, we can certainly adjust as needed. But making sure to have plenty of the little plastic ones in there takes care of the load. Yeah. I have to say, this is, this, this has always been one of the most special things I've, yes. I've done as an officer in the past. Yeah. But I will also have to say, I've never been unless I was with our pastor. Oh. <laughs> I've never been as just officers of the church. I, so we need to be sure everybody who's volunteering, I want to be with somebody who has done it or feels very comfortable. Yeah. I mean, I've always felt very comfortable, but that's when... You know, you were pulling me along saying, <laughs> come on, this 
and you were the lead. Sure. So. Yeah, this is different. Yeah. But you can all do it. <laughs> you just as special and just as oh, lovely. lovely. It's just you do somewhat it. anxious. Yes. Yeah. 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 But you make sure you don't. You do have to have one person who really decides they will take the lead. Be very familiar with the script yes. and be comfortable with all of that. You really do have to have one person who's going to commit to giving and that to stuff to that learning. <laughs> and this is going to start that day. Okay, and you have to now try to remember Sophie's children's <laughs> sermon that might be Yeah, and some of sure, that, you know. sure. Yeah, that's true. You could. Yeah, still give us her right. yeah. <laughs> you can do that. Well, I mean, I, I guess that's the part that I've even heard people say made them nervous when we've gone through training before is doing the sermon recap. It's like, oh, whoa. <laughs> you know, this. So I, I think that is a concern. Well, and uh, like I said, um, before I've I've done it before where I kind of tried to recap my own sermon. I've also done it before where I just said, what do we all think about this? And and let let that input be the sermon. And that's fine. It really is. Suppose well, someone's already it, watched it, it on, it. on uh, YouTube. Yeah, and it, and and now it's certainly likely that somebody had watched it. And so you might ask them if, if you know that they watched it. Um <laughs> You know, what did, what did you think? <laughs> what were you saying? I was just going to say, a lot of the time, oh, one of the times I went, they had watched the service on the oh, so we didn't spend much time talking about the service. You didn't have to do all that. Really. No, they had already got yeah. the book. It's yeah. like if they, they fell asleep, that's all them. Yeah. <laughs> How many people are on the list already? To serve? Yes. I mean, that to be volunteers or no, 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 to, be uh, to be served? Um, to be served. Approximately maybe 10, 8 to 10. So once a quarter on the communion Sunday, we want to serve all 10 or yeah. however many are on the list. Confirm, yeah. Yeah. Oh, once they confirm, right? Yeah, because yeah. a lot of, you know, you could easily have the money just sort of have yeah. a field like this week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or I'm out of town. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. I got it. okay. I was just trying to understand the logistics of the volunteers needed for those that need to be served, which will be confirmed the week before, right? So, do you want to ask them about how many people per team? Um, you ask uh, everybody. I mean, because they're going to be the ones. We're going to be the ones filling in. Well, well, depending on how many need to be served, maybe two. Here, so it needs to be two people per, oh, per yeah. team. Okay. Yeah, it needs to be two, um, and uh, at least you now. Like now the other thing you could do though, um, so it needs to be two officers. Um, but you could certainly grab a third, and say, "Hey, so this is this is something cool." Two people. Yeah, it's. I think it, there's a danger of becoming intrusive. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bring. I wouldn't bring a whole big handful. I think no more than two. Oh, I see. Each group of two, but go see two. You go see two. You try to map it out. Right. And would I would I be correct in thinking that you have ten people? You're trying to do it once a quarter, so this many could be seen on the. The first month of the quarter, these people could be seen the second month of the quarter, these could be seen the third month of the quarter. They wouldn't all have to be seen the very first month of the quarter. Yeah. First community. Probably. Could be. They could well, get, they get it once a quarter. Right. That one, I guess it depends how many people right. we have. Right. There's a lot more than that are here. Your list is pretty long of volunteers. And there was 14 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was before you had all the elders and you know, we only had two rounds. Yeah, we're gonna have to make more. We're gonna have to make more kits. And the other thing I would make bring up is that it it probably would be good or best to have a mixed team, a male and a female, especially if it's your first visit. 
Why? Yeah. Why, Jack? Well, um, some people are not comfortable. You know, if they're at home and they're in their bed and they might and they're alone, they might not be comfortable with two guys coming in if it's a woman. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm not. I'm just yeah. throwing that out there. Uh, we're gonna, we're going to learn from experience, obviously. Um, I think if we if we ask people if they're if they want communion this particular Sunday and we get three yeses or four yeses, I think we'll be doing well. And I think if we reach out every communion Sunday to find out from people, you know, whether or not they're interested in having communion and uh, and they're, you know, they're on the list and they got it last week and or last month and this month, you know, you don't know what their situation is. Somebody may want it, uh, you know, every time we have communion and some people may just want to have that experience once and they're only bedridden for a while you know i'm just saying i think the flexibility i'll shut up i'm sorry well i mean that's 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 the key um there's no there's no uh set thing here each person is different um flexibility is is important um even even each person you come to see is going to be dealing with something different our commitment is not support yeah Davis, can I ask another question? Yes. Um, if we are, we know the situation is such that we really need to just do a very short visit with the communion. What would you say would be the key things that we really should do? Uh, because there, there may be a time when it's they're not up to more than us being there 15 minutes and we want to serve communion, but what would you say we really need to do? Um, you know, that, that list of things that, that I said are important. Um, I would try to do those, uh, but they don't have to be out of the book. They can be, they can be fast. You can say a, sh a short prayer of confession and assurance of pardon, but I don't. I wouldn't want to miss that part because a lot of times um, that's the most meaningful thing to people. Is, right. uh, is that um, again scripture reading? Um, read it. Read a scripture, and uh, if if the only thing that can happen is is someone says, you know, to me that when I hear that, I think about. Uh, the way God loves me and, and it gives me joy, that's that's good. Um, and then, uh, you know, sh say some kind of prayer of thanksgiving and, and do communion and then do a blessing. So I, I would say try to do all of those things that are on the list, but do them in a way that feels right for the situation. Um, is that what you mean? Is that, yeah, well, I'm just saying, I mean, is, is this, do, do we have that flexibility to, to kind of um, hit, hit the high points of that, but make it, you know, maybe, maybe we're not up to reading the whole, the whole thing, but, you know, like you said, yeah. maybe a sentence prayer instead of a paragraph prayer. Yeah, well, that's, that's what that I'm. Kind of, do you feel like that's okay for us to do if we feel the situation deems that we need a very short visit. Yeah, and let me say, I, I tried to say this before, but let me say it a different way. Um, think of this service as almost a, a backup. You can turn to it if you want to, but um, if you don't feel like you need this, um, just try to hit these points. Okay. And and you will have done and you will have done it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that there's nothing, uh, you know, there's nothing uh, set in stone about these words in particular. Um, th this is this is a tool. It's not prescribed. Okay. Four, what is that for? I was thinking about 
But did yeah. didn't y'all do yes. it with Dana? Because yes. we had training. That's why I was saying maybe 20 months. Several months. Mm -hmm. I would say 19, yeah. All right. Any other questions? Um, you can certainly ask me things throughout the month. <laughs> can we find a friend that day if we run into the school? It's not kind of each other. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 What, what do we need to do to, is there something somebody can do to assist with? With getting more of these? Do um, you know we need some more bags? Yeah, yeah. They're going yeah, yeah. They said they would do it. I don't know where these came from, so I'll ask around some, but we may end up with baskets or some, you know, something else. Skippy uh, jar full of wine and a bag full of Biscuits. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, actually, it's kind of hard to zip up. All right. Well, thank you all for your time tonight. You. I'm sorry, this room is hot. <laughs> it's nice here. I, if I, I should have turned it on 30 minutes before y'all came. <laughs> Don't forget to turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I would like to keep this when you get the ball done. Rather than having it, because I want to be familiar with it before I get a bag. I have one that has your and Danny's names on it that I can give you. It's in my office. But it's not in this bag. What? What's that? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm gonna. You mean one of these folders? I'll probably. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know. And so is that, is the thing finding things, they want the same script and stuff? Yeah. I'll, I'll get it in a second. <laughs> Bring it to you. <laughs> yes, sir. Want me to end this meeting? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a recording also. You want to close us in prayer, James? Sure, I'll give it a shot. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all together to reinvigorate, restart, renew this awesome ministry. Uh, praise God for all these wonderful volunteers and pray for all those individuals that we will be visiting and helping to bring your spirit and your presence into their households. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I finish you? I know. That's going to be the weekend after July 4th. You know the congregation the week of July 4th? Nobody's here. Oh.